Hey everyone, how you doing? It's Vicious here, and today I'm going to be bringing you a tutorial video on how to install, set up, and use Mumble. I'm bringing you this video because I'm starting up a new live stream thing with the Dungeon Defenders community, and a really big part of my live stream is having the interaction with the viewers, and we're going to be doing that through Mumble. Mumble is a, a VIOP client, and the two names you would probably know best are Ventrilo and TeamSpeak. Those are the same kind of program. Basically, it's a voice over IP. It lets lots of people talk to each other at the same time from far away. But the good thing about Mumble is that unlike those two I just named, it's actually much better than the other two. People don't know about it as much, I don't think, although it has gotten much more popular the last few years. This is a lower latency, so there's less lag in between people talking. It's a higher quality, and you can set it up and run your own server like I do for free. It's really great. So Let's get started. I'll try to talk kind of quick and just show you the stuff you really need to know. And that way, we can, you know, it won't be a really long tutorial. Go ahead and get to your web browser and go to mumble.sourceforge.net, and that's where you'll be able to find the program and download it. Download the whatever stable client is currently out. Right now, it's 1.2.3a. Save it to your computer, run it, and install it. Once you've done that, go ahead and run. And when you've run it, you're going to get this mumble client. Here it is. Here's the program. The first thing you need to know is Mumble comes default with the voice activation turned on. So when you talk and it picks up your voice, it opens up your microphone. This is very bad if you don't configure it first, and it's very, very bad if you're using speakers in a microphone. Do not ever use voice activation if you're using speakers in a microphone, because every time someone talks to you or the game makes noise, it's going to go into your microphone and cause reverb, and it's really bad for everybody. So only use push to talk if you're going to be using that kind of setup. Voice activation is okay if you tune it right and you have a headset. To get your sound configured for your microphone and your speakers and all that good stuff, go to configure and go to audio wizard. It's a really great step-by-step -step wizard that takes you through setting all of your different levels. If you're going to use push to talk, it lets you set your push to talk key. I mean, it takes you through it step-by-step, -step, so I won't show you that. I'll let you do that on your own. Once you've got your audio configured properly, it's time to go ahead and connect to a server. For the sake of the tutorial, I'll show you how to connect to mine. Go to server and go to connect. And you want to add a new server. The label is the name of the server. You don't have to put in anything specific. This is just what you want to name it. So you can name it, you know, in my case, I'll just call it Vicious's Mumble Server. The address is important. This is either the IP address of the server, or in my case, I use a URL to redirect it. So the URL to get to mine is nbrchat.servebeer.com. The port for mine is the default 64738, and the username is the name that you want to connect to Mumble with. If you're doing the Dungeon Defenders thing with me on the live stream, I would either use your forum name if you're on the trendy forums, or pick like your Steam name or something. I already have my server added as this favorite here, NBR Chat, so I'll just go to edit real quick and let you confirm this is how you'd fill it in. Once you've filled in all the details, hit connect, connected. and now you're connected to the server. It looks kind of like Ventrilo a little bit. All these different names and games here are chat rooms. To join one, you just simply click on it. So now I'm in the Magicka chat room. Anyone else who's in their Magicka with me can talk with me. If you see an arrow out to the side, that means it has sub um, chat rooms. So I can click on Dungeon Defenders and join Dungeon Defenders, or I can go to a lower level and go to the Watching Stream. For those who are doing the live stream thing, this is where you're going to go. If you're watching the live stream, this is where you can go to talk to other people watching the live stream. On stream is where you're going to go when you're actually in the game playing with me. So that way we keep it separate. The people who are about 10 seconds behind watching the stream won't interfere with those who are playing on the stream. The uh, lips light up red when your mic is activated. This is how you know you're on the microphone. If I stop talking, it's going to go gray. If you need to walk away and you, or you know, make noise or yell at someone ever, click the microphone here to mute yourself. If someone else is in the room, you might also have a reason to do this. Deafen yourself. This is making it so you uh, don't hear anybody else. Unmuted and unmuted. Now let me show you some of the more uh, settings that you might need to know here. Text-to-speech, you can turn it on or off. When you're in a room, if you go to this chat box, you can talk to other people in there. Hey guys! And it shows up here. If someone has text-to-speech on it, actually, Mumble will talk to you in text-to-speech. So that's pretty cool. Now let's look at settings here. Configure, settings. 
first thing I do is I click this advanced box. It gives me a lot more options. If you say didn't set up push to talk properly, here's where you could change it under audio input, change voice activity to push to talk. And then go over to shortcuts, add a new one, choose the function to be push to talk. Go to the shortcut and you, it says press the shortcut key. And for my case, I use a mouse button. Using a mouse button is a lot easier than using a keyboard key for me because I have one hand on the mouse always and I can just push one of the mouse buttons to talk. I thought that might be a tip I'll share with you guys. So I'm going to remove that. I already have mine set. Then the last thing I'll tell you about that is much more advanced is the overlay. Mobile has this really, really cool overlay. It's on by default. I normally keep it off because it kind of gets in the way of some of my games sometimes. But for the live stream, I'm going to turn it on. So you can turn it on or off right here. It also has a frames per second counter similar to Fraps that you can turn on or off. Uh, now with the overlay enabled, this is the overlay right here. You see like this little picture of it. You can drag it anywhere you want it to show up in your game. So I have it in the top left corner. Here is your blacklist if you do not want it to show up in a certain game. So instead of turning it off completely, I could have just added to the blacklist the particular game I don't want it to show up in. Whitelist is programs you want it to show up in, so you can do that as well. So if you want it to only show up in certain programs or certain games, you can go with the whitelist instead of the blacklist. And right click on it and you get so many options. Look at this. Only talking is good. If you're in a room with 20 people, you do not want to see 20 people's names listed in your game. If you click only talking, the people's names only show up when they're talking. Always show yourself. That means it's going to show you whether you're talking or not. You can turn that on or off. Show everybody in your channel or show everybody in linked channels. So this is some options. You can set how many columns that it uses. And if you go to edit here, you can do a lot more. You can Choose whether you want to show someone's avatar, their username, their channel, whether their mute state is uh, on or off in the bounding box. Here's the state, you know, passive talking. So there's lots of options to mess with. I'm going to go ahead and go into game real quick and show you what it looks like. I have Dungeon Defenders up in the background. So there it is, Dungeon Defenders. If you look at the top left side, you'll see my avatar and my name. And it's lit up because I'm talking. If I stop talking, it's going to go gray just like that. So this is really cool when you're playing with people you don't know necessarily, you can tell who's talking and when they're talking with this overlay. And that's why I like it so much. And we'll minimize that. And let's talk about the last thing, your avatars and stuff. If you go to your name, if you, if you go to self, you can go to change avatar and assign yourself an avatar by picking an image off of your computer. You can see if I mouse over my name that I get this zombie avatar. And I have a link there to my Steam community uh, page. If you right click on your name and you go to change comment, you can put something in here. So I, like I said, I put the link to my Steam page, but you could also put your like, I'm away, I'll be right back, whatever. So I think with that, I covered most of the really cool features that some people might not ever discover on Mumble without someone telling them about it. And I gave you enough of the basics that you can use the program and get installed and get running. So. If you have any other questions, just come and ask me, and I'll try to help you out. For anyone who just needed mumble information, I hope I helped you. For anybody watching the video for the live stream, I hope to see you there. And this was Vicious, and I'll see you guys later.